Identity 5 is a game that features four main survivor categories. Contain, Assist, Rescue, and Decode. While certain characters may excel in a single category, the best survivors are typically those who can perform well in two or even three categories simultaneously. To illustrate this point, let's compare the Coordinator and Mercenary. Both of them are rescuers, while Coordinator is excellent at rescuing, Mercenary not only rescues just as well, if not better, but also has superior kiting potential, making him a more versatile survivor overall. Each survivor category has its own strengths and weaknesses to balance the gameplay. For example, uh, rescuers uh, decode slower, harassers sacrifice decoding time, they also run the risk of giving free hits to the hunter, which can force the team to heal and also give the hunter presence. Kiters struggle with rescuing and decoders have really poor kiting abilities. This forces players to build diverse teams and take on different roles, and it makes the game a lot more interesting. However, the balance is starting to shift a little bit with the introduction of newer characters that lack any significant weaknesses. Take Prisoner for example. I know he's not the newest character, but he is still a good example of this. He excels at decoding. Um, his harassing of the hunter is also good. His rescuing, it's not good, but it's also not worse. It's about the same as any other kiter out there. And, you know, his kiting, which is supposed to be the weakness of his category, is pretty good also. And unlike characters like Magician, who is you know, a good all-rounded character without any particular strengths or weaknesses. He's a great generalist. Prisoner still has a huge impact on the ciphers when he's left alone. He still excels really well in one category while having no weaknesses in any of the others. In the past, characters like Mechanic were balanced by their weaknesses, such as poor kiting abilities, and this is why Mechanic was so good back in the day. You know, the doll was kind of like a band-aid that, you know, she could slap over her, you know, her poor vaulting, her bad kiting. You know, it, it was a really, really good cover-up. But there was still counterplay to that. The hunter can kill the doll and rip the band-aid off completely, and now Mechanic's a pretty bad character once her doll is gone. But newer characters like Composer or Prisoner, they just lack weaknesses. So, you know, they just wield a threat, and it doesn't really matter the situation. It doesn't matter what you really do about it. If you don't chase them, well, they're gonna cipher rush you. If you do chase them, well, they still have a chance to kite you just as well as another kiter. You know, the problem of newer characters being too powerful in too many areas totally throws off the game balance. And, you know, if it continues in this way, like the game balance, and you can make the argument it's already lopsided, but if this continues, it's going straight out the window onto the grass of the front yard. Like, it is completely over if you know, power creep like this continues happening into the game. It's already really bad on the hunter faction. If we make it any worse, like, disaster is going to strike. You know, at this point, we could really have a, a full decoder team be meta, you know, with mechanic being the rescuer, prisoner being your main harasser, and composer being your kiter. Now all we need is one more decoder that's good in any of those areas, and, you know, we have a pseudo team that's full of main decoders that also are really good in other areas that also have no other weaknesses. Like, you can't tell me that that wouldn't just be ridiculous and make the game awful. <laughs> uh. But anyway, having too much powerful characters just makes it bad. Hopefully, Nettie's fixes this. It's still fixable, honestly, if you just nerf some characters, um, give them proper weaknesses back again. Um, there is also the potential that this is kind of like the uh, sniper problem in uh, shooter games, where when you put the all the data and stuff on the table and talk about it, um, there is like a really big glaring problem, but you don't see it abused that much in actual gameplay. Uh, but I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I am very, very curious to hear people's opinions on this. Also, I have a Discord bot. That's all about Identity 5. You should totally invite that. It's very cool. And Identity 5 tools, both of those links in the description.